Um, hi, I'm Fred. Um, I work on Keybase, and in particular, the Keybase file system. Um, a little bit of background about myself. I've been at Keybase for a little over a year now. Um, before Keybase, I worked at Google and Amazon for a few years. So yeah, um, Keybase. Uh, this talk, uh, that URL points to this talk if you want to follow along. Um, for the first half, I'll be talking about uh, public key encryption and Keybase uh, because you kind of need to know to understand what Keybase is to get what KV, how KVFS works. And in the second half, I'll talk about KVFS, how to use it, and the technology and crypto behind it. Uh, and uh, I'll try and move quickly over the public key encryption stuff. Um, how many of you are familiar with public key encryption? Right, so I'll try and move quickly over that so we can get to the good stuff about KVFS. But feel free to interrupt me and ask questions if I move too fast or something is not clear. All right, so why, why encryption? Um, you have Alice and you have Bob. Um, and Alice wants to communicate with Bob without Mallory listening in, tampering with it, or impersonating either Alice or Bob. So this is the classic setup for um, uh, symmetric encryption. So Alice and Bob have a single shared key that no one else knows. And with that, Alice can encrypt a message and send it to Bob, and Bob can decrypt it without anyone in the middle um, decrypting it. Uh, or impersonating either Alice or Bob. Right. So um, why public key encryption? Uh, well, um, in the previous slide, you have Alice and Bob with a single shared key, but then the question becomes how, how, do, you, uh, derive, how do you get a shared key between two people um, without these two people meeting? Uh, and that's, that turns out to be a hard problem. So public key encryption is a little different. Um, it lets Alice let anyone communicate with her without uh, Mallory listening, listening in or tampering with it um, or impersonating Alice. And it lets Alice um, sign messages so that she can prove that she wrote what she wrote. Uh, so here is the like a standard uh, public key encryption setup. You have a key pair, uh, a private key that only Alice knows and a public key that everybody knows, that is disseminated to everyone. Um, and assuming that someone knows that that public key is tied to Alice, someone can use the public key to, uh, to encrypt the message and send it to Alice, and only Alice can read it. Uh, so um, what is public key cryptography? Um, basically what I just went over. But in addition, uh, if Alice wants to make a signed statement, she can sign it with her private key, and then anyone with her public key will be able to verify that she was the one that made that statement. All right, so now the problem becomes, if Alice wants everyone to know her public key, uh, Alice also wants everyone to know that uh, that public key is tied to her. This is the key distribution problem. How does Bob get Alice's public key? Where does he look, and how can he be sure that it's Alice's key and not Mallory's? So over here, um, this is the uh, MIT uh, key server for PGP keys. Uh, Gavin Andreessen is the uh, lead developer for Bitcoin. Um, and if you do a search for him on this server, you get a lot of PGP keys. Because there are a lot of people who are very interested in what people would like to tell uh, Gavin Andreessen uh, in secret, right? And uh, if you notice that the, the key server has HTTPS, so it must be secure, right? So yeah, we have a number of flawed solutions for uh, distributing keys. You can post it on the key server. Uh, you can post it on your website. But then, uh, you know, how do you know that Someone hasn't taken over your website. How do you know that uh, someone isn't in the, in intercepting requests to your website and replacing it with a different public key? Uh, and append it to all your emails, as this XKCD comic shows. Uh, hardly anyone like actually verifies uh, PGP keys attached to emails. 
Uh, you can post it on Twitter, which, uh, can, which is a good step, especially if you're verified. <coughs> Um, and there's something called the web of trust, which I don't want to go into very deeply, but it involves like meeting people in person and then signing each other's keys, and that really doesn't scale very well. So, oh, a uh, uh, more recent development is that Facebook now lets you uh, post your PGP key uh, and tie it to your account. So that's a promising step uh, if you're a PGP nerd. Uh, and also, I think Yahoo and Google have uh, Browser, uh, browser um, extensions that let you uh, work with PGP keys with email. Uh, it's not like widely disseminated yet, but they're working on it. So these are promising steps uh, if you use PGP. Uh, so key basis solution. Uh, basically, your public identity is, oh, Second. yep. Is that the limitation of the, because I know Steve really like PGP, PGP. So the limitation you talked about, about not the difficulties of sharing your, your public key, is that the, the, the end of the complaints about PGP? Or um, it's a valid complaint, but are there other? Yeah, there are other complaints, uh, most of them uh, stemming from the fact that PGP is a fairly old protocol. Uh, and there are a lot of like, uh, sort of legacy tied up in it. Um, it was developed like in the 90s where uh, the state of crypto was very much in flux. And there are many ways to shoot yourself in the foot when uh, working with PGP. Um, there are a couple of papers about people who've done user studies on PGP. And um, it's, if you read the user studies, it's kind of like a disaster even with tech savvy folks. You have people, like the task would be the you know, use PGP to send a secure email to someone, and people do stuff like they send the, e the encrypted email and then they send their private key also, which, which works, but it's not, it's not what you want, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that, that's my complaint, I mean, is that it's just been a total disaster. I mean, I, I remember when it was first introduced because I was already on the internets at the time, and, and indeed, it seemed like a great idea, but the actual implementations have just been one disaster after another of horrible user interfaces and flawed, and, and as like the XKCD shows, I mean, most people don't even verify it, you know? I mean, that's not to say that it's not useful. In fact, it's incredibly useful. And if you look into like some of like the Snowden stuff and so on, I mean, it was, that might not have happened without PGP existing, but it was just hard to get done. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, that's what Gus was saying, it's hard, hard to deal with as well, right? How hard is it for a regular person? Yeah. So, yeah. You know I mean? Quite difficult. And, and seriously, since 1990 something, people have been saying, oh, well, this is going to be integrated into email clients and it'll be just yeah. as yeah. easy as, as the blue lock or the green lock on your web browser. But it's not. It hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. And it's not academic to say, too, that somebody could modify a website and swap out a public key. This has happened and is not that difficult to achieve. Right. So. Yeah. Okay, so what is key basis solution? So, yeah, basically your public identities are some of your social media accounts. Like if you have a GitHub, you have a Twitter, you have a Reddit account. So some of that is like your public identity. Um, and like Keybase lets you use your social media accounts to distribute your public key and to do so in such a way as to be computer verifiable. Basically, um, Keybase auto automates like uh, it lets you make signed statements and then you post those statements on your social media accounts so that uh, a Keybase client can verify that the same person controls the Keybase account, the social media accounts, and the public key. Um, automatically, without you having to like manually verify. So you can do like key base, identify whoever, and then it'll just say, you know, this person has these social media accounts and it is tied to this uh, PGP uh, key. Um, and also, um, I'll, I'll go over this later, but uh, we do more than just, uh, it let, we do more than just let you send your PGP key to everybody. And, uh, 
we like to say that it's centralized management with decentralized trust because even though we maintain the information about what Keybase account is tied to which social media accounts, you don't have to trust us. Uh, we give you the data, we give your client the data, and your client is the one that does the verification. And then if we, if we Keybase, try to lie to you, then the, the signatures won't match or it won't verify. Right. Right, so it's not just for PGP. Um, one other problem with PGP is that now we live in a multi-device world and PGP keys are intended, you're intended to, to have one PGP key and to have it among all your devices. And that, that doesn't really scale, especially with mobile, like how do you get your PGP key on your, on your phone? Right, so what we do, what Keybase does is we use uh, per device keys. Uh, we base it on uh, NACL. It's actually pronounced SALT, but it's written NACL. And, and uh, something we wrote called SALT Pack. Uh, NACL is a crypto library uh, written by Dan Berns uh, Daniel Bernstein, uh, like a really uh, cool crypto guy. Um, he, and it's like a lot simpler, it's a lot, he, uh, NACL um, does crypto in a lot simpler way than PGP. PGP has a lot of knobs that you can twiddle and turn, aka a lot of ways to shoot yourself in the foot, and NACL avoids some of that. Um, and the idea <coughs> is that uh, once, you do, once you generate a, a device key, it never leaves your device. And uh, with Keybase, these per device keys verify each other uh, in the same way that you can use a key to verify a social media account. So you can have like a set of devices which are all, uh, all verify that this set of devices is tied to your Keybase account. So this will become clear clearer uh, with this graph, which is uh, the graph of my uh, Keybase account. Uh, I don't know if you can read the text there, but the blue, the blue uh, circles are all my social media accounts, like I'm Acolin at Reddit, Acolin at GitHub, uh, FAKL, Facolin at Twitter, and so on. And they're all signed by the green PGP key in the middle, or they're all verified, they're all tied together. And at the bottom, there are three red uh, squares, and those are my devices, like my laptop, my desktop at home, and my Linux machine, and they're all like cross-verifying each other. And also the PGP key and my laptop are cross-verifying each other. And also, um, we don't have support for mobile yet. We have it planned. Um, but the red, the red square is a, what we call a paper key. So um, if you lose all your devices, uh, basically you wouldn't have any access to your Keybase account anymore because you don't have anything, you can't sign anything anymore. So the paper key is something that you should, uh, I mean, we tell you to write down a set of words and then keep it in a safe somewhere. So you write it down and then if you lose access to, any, uh, to all of your devices, you can use that paper key to verify a new device. Um, and then that's, uh, once we have mobile, uh, you won't really need the paper key that much anymore, but it's a good backup, uh, uh, backup option. What? I heard backup. Sorry. Yep. Other kind of backup, dude. Right. Yeah. Paper backup. Paper yeah. backup. Well, the paper keys are pretty cool because they're, they're words. Yeah, they're and words. And even though it's called a paper key, it could also be a mental key. So you, can, you could probably memorize your paper key if you are smart. If you are or if you're smart. one of those people. Yeah. Or you could store your, your password manager. Or you could store it in your password manager. Yeah. Which you won't be able to get. Or in your safe. You no or in your safe deposit box or in your mom's house. <laughs> yeah. The problem with the password manager is that, well, if you use a cloud one, then that might work. But if you lose all your devices, you might lose the password manager too. And so yeah. Got backups as a password manager. Encrypted with your Okay. Anyways, go ahead. Yep. Okay, um, and this is just like a flow of how Keybase uh, works, like without, without KVFS. So you have Alice and Bob. <clears throat> and Alice, uh, Alice knows Bob on Twitter. And Alice says, hey, Bob, send me your super secret Afro formula. Um, and Alice signs up with Keybase. Uh, she gives Keybase her public key. Uh, she uh, generates uh, signed statements uh, on Twitter and GitHub. 
uh, and Bob can look at Keybase and verify that uh, the same person that talked to him on Twitter is this person at Keybase with this public key. Uh, he can download all the proofs, and, or the, his client will download all the proofs and verify them. And then Bob can use that, uh, that public key to send a message to Alice with the formula. And only Alice will get that formula with the afro. <laughs> right. And so, like, I think someone mentioned, like, once, once you sign up with Keybase, like, what can you do? Um, and so we were thinking about that, like, not everyone will be able to use PGP. And we want, we want to, like, disseminate crypto to everybody. So we were, um, yeah, Keybase solves the identity problem in an inherently social way. Uh, and we wanted to look for apps where uh, security, and you can like collaborate with someone securely. And so the first focus, uh, what we decided to work on was the Keybase file system. Right, and uh, I'm gonna stop here. This is like the midpoint, this is the midpoint of the talk. So, uh, well, before he stops, does, is, does everybody understand at least roughly what we're talking about here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Curtis? Yeah. Thank you for putting me as the least common denominator. Uh, no, you've been asking questions. No, so no. I just want to make sure I, you're... I would say, um, would it be fair to describe it as an enhancement? To, like a, like a, you're, you're in... Uh, um, cooperation with PGP. It doesn't look like you're replacing PGP. You're enhancing it. Um, do you, could you, do, do, you have, do you see at some point getting rid of PGP or do you, or is it? Well, we're not getting rid of PGP. You're, um, you're solving the problems that you mentioned with PGP, the key sharing and uh, that stuff. Right, I think PGP will always be a part of Keybase, but it won't be the focus. Like, you'll be able to attach a PGP key to your Keybase account, but you'll be able to use Keybase and KVFS just fine without PGP, with the per-device keys. 